the play, please play the national anthem. President Pro Tem Stan Ziano, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we don't have a, a member of the faith to lead us in prayer, but we would still like to have a moment of silence uh, to, before we get started. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Any person who takes any action to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city, city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? No, at this time. Are there resolutions by members of uh, council? Council member Mitch Brown? None this evening, sir. Thank you, council member. Council member Remy. Council member Page. President Pro Tem Cinziano. I do, and President Harden, that might be the first time we got to me that so quickly. Quick. Uh, and I told my guests ahead of time, unfortunately it's alphabetical order, but alas, here we are. Uh, so at this time, I would like to invite team president of the Ohio Machine, Ryan Schnolt, and head coach Bear Davis to the podium as I introduce resolution 0117X-2018 to recognize and celebrate the Ohio Machine's major league lacrosse championship and their contributions to the Columbus community. So guys, a lot quicker than I promised you, so it must be you. Uh, as a result of the machine's efforts of both players and coach, the Ohio Machine, based in Central Ohio, won the 2017 Major League Lacrosse Championship this past summer. Last season was all, an all-around success for the team with numerous wins and accolades, including seven players named as MLL All-Stars and the MLL MVP. Not only does the team excel at lacrosse, the group also strives to better our community and carries a strong commitment to community engagement, as represented by the establishment of the Ohio Machine Lacrosse Foundation and the team's generous participation events, including the Shootout for Soldiers and the Ohio High School Senior All-Star Game, both of which were hosted by the machine. The Ohio Machine's 2017 championship comes as a result of hard work and dedication and a team continued commitment to public service is truly appreciated by the residents of the city of Columbus. So it's my honor to present the resolution uh, to both the machine's president and coach and in recognition for your championship this season and contribution to the Columbus community. With that, the floor is yours, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, last year was a very special year for the machine. Um, it was the champion, first championship for the program, uh, and everyone that was on our team, all 25 guys, it was the first time they had ever won the championship. And it really kind of was credit to our head coach, Bear Davis, and, and his, uh, his leadership. And that really kind of fulfilled our first tenant, which was to go ahead and play championship lacrosse. And we look forward to repeating that. Our season starts up in April, the year on April 29th. Um, but I think more importantly, um, as, as you mentioned, 
um, is our commitment to the growth of the game in the area. And I think that the foundation that we have through the Columbus Foundation and our partnership that we have with uh, Columbus Rex and Parks Department and trying to go ahead and have the game in the many different uh, community centers, uh, a commitment to go ahead and growing at the grassroots, that's really what we want to see for the long-term growth of the game, not just here in Columbus, but throughout the region. So it's a, it's a, it's a big effort for us. I certainly wanted to uh, thank you guys for inviting us here and this recognition. Uh, you know, our players and our organization has worked hard to, you know, help, um, you know, uh, expose Ohio lacrosse to the rest of the world here and, and uh, you know, with the commitment and uh, success that, you know, many, many people have put into the game in, in Ohio, uh, I, hopefully our championship is just one of many to come and, and keep growing this game here. Thank you. So in recognition, though, we do have a gift for the council. Uh, an official oh, that's cool. machine uh, jersey for this year. So we'd like to go ahead and present this to the council at this time. I'll see if any of my colleagues have any comments or questions. With seeing none, I'll move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stanziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you both and good luck on the upcoming season. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you. I have one resolution this evening, and I'm going to ask Ms. Dana Brown to walk towards the podium, please. And this resolution that I'm going to read is uh, an important uh, resolution in regards to our local food action plan. And Ms. Brown has been, um, I think about the action plan, which, and goal B is to improve access to and education about healthy food, affordable food, and local food. And then there is, um, within that grouping, there is um, B12 is to support the expansion of nutrition and food system education in pre-K through the 12th grade. And so resolution um, number 0123X-2018 is to honor and to, rec and to congratulate Ms. Dana Brown and the All in, the, All in a Day Child Care Center for being recognized as a 2017-18 Day Care Center Provider of the Year by the Children's Hunger Alliance. Whereas studies have shown that a child's nutritional status can directly affect the mental capacity of a, of a school-aged child. Moreover, good nutrition helps children show up at school prepared to learn and ultimately leading to healthier, better developed, and well-behaved students. Whereas the mission of, Columbia, of the Children's Hunger Alliance is to ensure that children without, without access receive healthy food, nutritional education, and physical activity. Whereas the Children Hunger Alliance helps more than 850 child care providers deliver healthy food and age-appropriate physical activity to help children in their care. Whereas this support includes enrolling, chil enrolling child care providers in the child and adult care food program, a federal child nutrition program that subsidizes healthy meals and snacks in a child care setting, providing annual training, assistance with meal planning, access to free kid care software to electronically submit meal, meal claims, and delivering an early learning curriculum focused on healthy living developed specifically for home child care settings. Whereas Ms. Dana Brown, owner of the All in a Day Child Care Center located in Southeast Columbus, Ohio, concerned about the children in her care, noticed that many of the parents would send their kids to school with lunches that lacked the fruits, vegetables, and nutritious foods that the kids needed to thrive. And as a result, Ms. Brown sought and established a partnership with the Children's Hunger Alliance. From this partnership, the All in a Day Child Care Center began using a caterer to prepare hot lunches and balanced nutritional, nutritious meals for the children in her care. Whereas Ms. Brown also began working with registered dietitians and cultivated a eat, play, grow nutrition education and physical activity curriculum that taught preschoolers table manners and healthy food and lifestyle choices. Whereas Ms. Dana Brown and the All in a Day Care Child Center was recognized again by the Children Hunger Alliance for operating a child care program that places healthy eating among its top priorities. The All in a Day, Ch Day Child Care
Daycare Center was again selected as the 2017 and 18 Daycare Center Program of the Year. Now therefore be it resolved by this Council of the City of Columbus that this Council does hereby honor and, and recognize and congratulate Ms. Dana Brown and the All in a Day Child Care Center for being recognized as the Daycare Program of the Year by the Children's Hunger Alliance. I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Thank you, Ms. Brown. The floor is thank yours. Thank you. First, I want to thank you for inviting us, us here. I'm here to represent All in a Day um, <coughs> and talk a little bit about our food program. We are involved with Children's Hunger Alliance, and it's been a great uh, asset to our child care center. And we are able to service more than 50 children. Um, and having this subsidy come from Children's Hunger Alliance makes a huge difference. The children in our care, uh, we're also a partnership, a head, step, head start partnership, sorry. So our children, um, the majority of our children are between three and five years old. And it makes a tremendous difference with them being able to have a full meal, with them being able to look forward to a hot meal because they get hot meals Monday through Friday. And they're really good meals. It's a, it's a very good caterer. So the children look forward to that. <laughs> And um, we appreciate all the funds that we get. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you your resolution, but I really want to thank you because you are making sure that our youngest learners are eating healthy food. And when you start off um, children eating healthy and exercising, yes. it will help them as they continue to move forward in their lives and they will be able to be on the trajectory of having a successful life because they'll be healthy young people and adults. So thank you for what you're doing um, thank to you. help our children. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement, but I also um, wanted to take this opportunity to thank um, the Jewish Family Services. Today, they held a, um, a job fair. They had 80 uh, businesses there that were focused on 30 different areas um, of jobs within our community. And it was, uh, again, uh, just thinking about all the opportunities that there are many jobs in our community. A few of the people that were there was the CAS Information Systems, um, Parallel Education Division, CODA, Kroger, the Giant Eagle. So lots and lots of 80 employers. They also had a waiting list of 20 employers that could not uh, even participate because of the spacing mm -hmm. concerns. So uh, again, if you are looking for employment, you can contact the Jewish Family Services and they can share with you the 80 different companies that are currently looking for employees. And then also um, this, this Wednesday, there will be the ABC Jobs Boot Camp, um, April the 18th from 11 until 3 p.m. at the Grand Event Center at Grandview Yard. The address is, is 820 Grandview, Grand, Goodell, I'm sorry, Goodell Boulevard. And um, they have uh, employers are there seeking part-time and full, people seeking part-time and full-time employment. Parking is free. The job resources will feature a computer lab, which is provided by Columbus City Council, working in um, collaboration with the, de um, with the uh, Department of Technology. And this will allow people to apply for jobs on site and also search your How Means Jobs database. And we also will have a resume lab and workshop in the Department of um, Education, I mean the, not Department of Education, the Department of um, Training has also been helpful in this, in this aspect also. So again, on Wednesday the 18th, come out if you're looking for a job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. I have one resolution this evening, and as I uh, begin to read, I'd like to invite Vince and Amber and all those folks here that are going to help us celebrate uh, resolution 115X-2018, and it's to recognize April 21st as uh, Columbus Music Day. Now, in Columbus, we all know that we are diverse and a vibrant city filled with artists, and we're proud to support music through our partners at GCAC, the uh, Greater Columbus Arts Council, and the Columbus Music Commission. 
So to celebrate our many musicians, the crew from In the Record Store, a local magazine and podcast devoted to highlighting Columbus's musicians, teamed up with four local bands to release a seven inch vinyl record for the Record Store Day 2018. The vinyl includes exclusive songs not available anywhere else and will have a limited release of 500 copies. And so just a portion of the, the resolution, be it resolved uh, by this council of the city of Columbus, that we do hereby recognize April 21st, 2018 as Columbus Music Day and celebrate all the local artists who add to the vitality of our community. Um, I have to admit that I need a vinyl record player, uh, but we are, we are so excited. The folks that, um, uh, the musicians who have put so much time into really shaping and, and coloring in the, who we are as a city, uh, we're so excited about that and so excited to recognize them. I, I was telling folks that uh, even today I was getting emails from local um, musicians saying we were so excited to celebrate this and to support uh, uh, this, this uh, resolution. So um, first I'll turn it over to you and then I'll uh, open it up to my colleagues if they have any comments. Thank you, Council President Hardin. It's an honor to be here today and contribute to the fabric of Columbus with uh, so many great people. I've got with me uh, Joey Hendrickson, uh, got Amber Nicole from uh, Mojo Flow. Up here we have Joey Gerwin, who is uh, an integral part of creating the vinyl 2500 Summit Street, as you referenced. We have uh, Nick D'Andrea, John Elliott from uh, local band Doc Robinson, who these guys are incredibly proficient and are releasing two albums on the 20th. And I know that uh, they may have a few things to share as well about that. but. When I look at the fabric of Columbus, I think about you know the uh, the Hunger Alliances that are here, and also the lacrosse team that was just here as well. And uh, we look at the the fabric of Columbus, and I think about the hard work these musicians put into creating this music. And it really is, um, I lovingly say this, it almost borders on insanity the level of detail they put into every note. Rather than insanity, a better word might be the level of care, the level of detail, and the passion that they put behind every song. And I can tell you that when Amber recorded her song for our vinyl, PCP, Perpetual Conduit of Positivity, it was an amazing thing to hear how much work she put into just seconds of a song. So when you listen to music, don't pass over, you know, swiping left or right on Spotify. Think about the care and the intention of the uh, detail that they put in, uh, in all of this. So there is so many great local bands, so many bands that uh, we've worked with on the podcast, and it really is just a, a pleasure to be a part of the fabric of Columbus and uh, contribute to what is uh, invariably an incredibly diverse city here in the Midwest. So, uh, Joey, you want like to say a few words? And I think we've seen a rise in the last three years of musicians in Columbus um, becoming uh, the entrepreneurs and the professionals and the creatives and interweaving into the fabric of technology and economic development and other uh, arenas in the city. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to see leaders um, who can create music like this. It really is. Thank you for having us. I just wanted to say hello, and I really, really appreciate uh, everything that you guys are doing. Um, to give us a music holiday um, is so exciting and so cool. Um, Columbus is already an opportunity city, already a smart city. We're already a cool city, in my opinion, and now we're making steps to becoming a music city. Hmm. And I really uh, had something to say different, but I want to jump on what you said, President Hardin, which is that um, you have we as the artists have colored in and shaped what the Columbus community is. And I would just like to say that as an artist from Columbus who has started my career here and who has uh, grown and blossomed here, that really the city has colored and shaped who I am. So the hmm. music that you hear, the lyrics that we put out are really just um, something that we want everyone to come together and enjoy. And it's really a reflection of what I feel um, I've been, I have had put into me by this amazing city. I can't believe that I landed here, and um, I am just so, so proud to call Columbus home, and so thankful to have a city council that cares about music like you all do, and who care to recognize those of us who are out here making the music. So thank you so much. And where can folks get the... Uh, it'll be available at uh, most of the record stores in town. Uh, we also have it online at our website. Uh, you can just 2500summitstreet.com. Okay. Uh, President Pro Tem Cinziano. 
Thank you, President Hardin. So it was a great article in the This Week, kind of highlighting how this was a crazy idea. Just curious what the hidden track is, or if you have to wait to get the uh, disc in order to learn what the hidden track is. Well, there, there's actually a bunch of hidden things. So uh, on every vinyl record, there's actually like a matrix number that's assigned to it. And so my wife is sitting back here, and uh, I, uh, it's VTMT81016. And so there's a hidden matrix number, and that's my wife and I's initials and our wedding anniversary. Uh, and my father's band, Ready One, who was from Northeast Ohio, I actually have a picture of him uh, and his band in there too. And then there's other hidden things with uh, Nick and John. We're going to be working with them. And so I've got, I'm wearing their t-shirt in there as well. And uh, it's, uh, there's, I think, the, oh, my, oh, the hidden track too is there's also my, uh, my grandfather. Every time, my grandfather, who had passed in 2001, he would go and he would, um, if we give him a pair of binoculars, something, a gift or something, he'd go, wow. He was Italian and so, uh, Spanish, sorry. Yeah, so he'd go, yeah, he'd go, wow. And so uh, I actually uh, asked Joey if he could mix uh, my grandfather going, wow. So if you listen to the end of the, uh, end of the vinyl, you hear my grandfather uh, say that. So it's pretty special to have my grandfather, Al Tornero, immortalized in this record. Well, thank you again. Like, like we said, you guys are helping to shape the Columbus of today and of the future um, and really celebrating the past of all those folks who have uh, added to um, our, our brilliant vitality. And so with that, um, may I have a, a, a move for passage? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. And my, my uh, only announcement that I have this evening, um, on behalf of uh, this council, my colleagues, we want to um, congratulate council member Elizabeth Brown and her husband, uh, Patrick Katzenmeyer. They uh, delivered a healthy baby boy over the weekend. Um, and so would you help me in cele celebrating and congratulating them for that. Thank you. Are there any comments by elected officials or members of uh, the administration? Council member, or uh, <laughs> city attorney? Madam Auditor. I see uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McAllister, Hilltop. All right. Are there any requests by members of council for the removal of ordinance or resolution from the consent action uh, portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30 day legislation by the city clerk? Uh, will the clerk now, uh, clerk call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading. Finance Committee, Resolution 116X-2018, Ordinances 955 and 1010-2018, Technology Committee, Ordinance 883-2018, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 847, 880, and 999-2018, Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 891-2018, Rules and Reference Committee, Ordinance 1053-2018. Seeing no speaker slips, uh, the following uh, ordinance appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those ordinance numbers into the record? Resolution of Expression 118X-2018, Finance Committee, Ordinances 833, 863, 931, 985, and 1006-2018, Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinance 839-2018, Public Safety Committee, Ordinances 845 and 927-2018, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Resolution 74X-2018, Ordinances 934, 953, and 1008-2018, Housing Committee, Ordinances 938, 939, 941, 942, 1014, 1015, 1016, 1017, 1038, and 1039-2018, Technology Committee, Ordinance 884 and 943-2018, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 473, 858, 864, 894, and 937-2018, Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinances 821, 861, 914, and 1007-2018, and appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0094, 96, and 97-2018. Seeing no speakers for the consent uh, action uh, portion of our agenda, are there any questions from my colleagues? 
Seeing none, may I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent actions? Uh, clerk, please call the roll by voice. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stanziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Yes. Sorry. And President Harden. Yes. Uh, consent agenda items are passed with that. We will now proceed with the second reading, 30 day tabled and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. This committee is chaired this evening by Council Member Remy. Thank you very much, Cou Council President Harden. Tonight we have. Um, Ordinance number 0723-2018 to authorize the issuance and sale of a special assessment bond anticipation note in the amount of 62,000 for the Broad Meadows Highfield Drive Area Street Light Assessment Project, section 441B of the city charter. This legislation provides funding for the department of, well first let me move to waive second reading. Clerk, call the road. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Hardin's passed. This legislation provides funding for the Department of Public Utilities proceed to proceed with the installation of an LED light, street lighting system through a bond sale. The project will include ornamental poles and underground wiring for the Broad Meadows Highfield Drive area. Property owners submitted a petition and will split the cost of the project with the city in accordance with the assessment procedure set forth in the city charter. City Council previously passed resolution 0175. 0157X 2016 and ordinances 3224 2016 to establish the scope of the work. Are there any comments from my colleagues or questions? If seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Next, we have 0954 2018 to authorize the Finance and Management Director on behalf of Fleet management division to establish purchase orders from universal term contracts for the purchase of vehicles from Byers Ford to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of one million three hundred fourteen thousand four hundred twenty six from the special income tax fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the purchase of automobiles and light duty trucks for various departments within the city of Columbus. Purchases include two vehicles for the division of police, six vehicles for the division of fire, 11 vehicles for the recreation and parks department, nine vehicles for the facilities management division, and five vehicles for the department of technology. Emergency action is being considered so the new vehicles can be placed into service for immediate use in an effort to meet original equipment manufacturers order dates for certain vehicles. Are there any questions from my colleagues this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. With your permission, Council President, that's all I have tonight in finance. And with your permission, I'll move on to public service and transportation. Please. Thank you very much. Tonight we have 0791-2018 to amend the 2017 capital improvement budget to authorize and direct the city auditor to appropriate and transfer funds from the special income tax fund to the streets and highway bonds fund. To, appro to appropriate funds within the streets and highway bonds fund and the street and highway improvement non-bond fund to transfer funds between projects within the streets and highway bond fund to authorize the director of public service to enter into contract with Shelley and Sands for resurfacing the 2018 project one to authorize the expenditure of up to eleven million three hundred seventy five thousand two hundred seventy eight dollars and thirty two cents for resurfacing 2018 project one and to declare an emergency. I'd like to ask the director to say a few words about this particular ordinance. Council President, Council Chair, and other members of Council, this ordinance will allow us to repair and resurface approximately 83 city streets along with 396 ADA curb ramps. As well as doing those curb ramps, we will be replacing curb and sidewalk along those ramps. Uh, this project also is getting a contribution from the City of Bexley where we are doing a street that is both within the city and within Bexley, so it shows great um, partnership with one of our suburban cities and we expect the work to begin on May 2nd and that's all I have unless there's any questions thank you thank you very much are there any questions from my colleagues seeing none I move for passage Second. please call the roll Brown Page Remy Stenziano Tyson President Hardin pass 
Before I start reading the next ordinance, I'd like to ask our Chief Innovation Officer, Michael Stevens, to come forward. Tonight we have ordinance number 0820-2018 to authorize the appropriation of funds in the Smart City Grant Fund to authorize the Chief Innovation Officer to execute a professional services contract with Pillar Technology Group, LLC, relative to the Smart City Challenge, IT professional services project, to authorize the expenditure of up to $2,500,000 from the Smart City Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. I'll turn this floor over to you to comment on this particular ordinance. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Remy, uh, President Hardin, members of Council. With Ordinance 820-2018, we are seeking authorization to enter into a professional services contract with Pillar Technologies Group to assist in the development of the Smart Columbus operating system. The Smart Columbus operating system is a web-based integrated data exchange that is the heartbeat of our Smart Columbus portfolio of grant projects as it will collect, house, digest, assimilate, and share all the data that is generated or required by the Smart Columbus projects. Moreover, the Smart Columbus operating system is being designed in a way to grow, to be an open data portal for the entire region. This will help us create an ecosystem of innovation, making critical data available and open to our residents, stakeholders, and business startups. The development of the operating system is an ongoing process, with the first version being launched this May for Startup Week. Pillar Technologies will help the Smart Columbus Program Office continue to build out and scale the Smart Columbus operating system to fulfill our long-term smart city goals. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Go ahead, Council Thank President. you, Chair Remy, and thank you, uh, Chief, uh, for coming and for your work on smart cities. Uh, this is uh, the kind of the backbone of smart cities, and so I know a lot of folks uh, look to different parts of uh, the smart cities, uh, comp different components, but um, how will we um, educate the community on, on this piece as it uh, continues to grow and to evolve as, as we kind of learn our way through this? The first critical piece is engaging our development community to be able to access, and that's why we're, we, we've targeted Startup Week, mm -hmm. to, to roll this out, to give those individuals an opportunity to go in and, and look at some of the static data that we're pulling into the operating system so they can try to uh, really, what kind of applications can be developed to solve problems. As we deploy the other projects and pull data from that and learn from that, we're going to roll out a, a communications plan on the operating system and, and, and the, the use and purpose of, of it. You know, we've got great partners in the Department of Technology around data and what does that mean for evidence-based decision making here at the city. So we'll continue to work with them as well to make sure that uh, we're serving our residents in, a, in the most effective way. And lastly, just because you're here and, and this, uh, thinking back to, to last year when we were working so hard on diversity as it pertains to smart cities, can you uh, speak to uh, uh, how we are in, engaging uh, our diverse community in, in this process? Sure, so we, we continue through our um, RFP process to bring in consultants who are assisting with us. They are bringing partners that have DBE qualified. Uh, to date, we've spent on consultants uh, 3.9 million of grant funds. 18% of that has gone to DBE uh, firms. And we we're continuing to work. I know I, I partner with our, our, our chief uh, diversity officer and our Office of Diversi Diversity and Inclusion and, and, and using that expertise as well to help us. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming down tonight. We appreciate it. Are there any other questions from my colleagues this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. Thank you. And the final ordinance I have tonight in public service is ordinance number 1056, 2018, to authorize the city auditor to transfer funds between projects within the streets and highways bond fund, to authorize the city's chief innovation officer to execute a contract modification with HNTB Ohio Inc. relative to the Smart City Challenge, to authorize the expenditure of up to one $1,400,000 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to pay for the contract modification and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you very much, President Hardin. That's all I have in public service. Thank you, Chair Remy. The next committee to come before council is the Safety Committee. Councilmember Mitch Brown chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Uh, tonight we have a second reading on Ordinance 
2018 to authorize the finance and management director on behalf of the fleet management division to establish purchase orders from a universal term contract with statewide Ford Lincoln for the purchase of patrol vehicles for the divisions of police and fire to authorize the appropriation expenditure of $2,362,712.92 from the special income tax fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the finance and management director to establish purchase orders for the acquisition of patrol vehicles for the division of the police and the division of fire. This will include 74 vehicles for the division of police, six vehicles for the division of fire, 25 of the vehicles purchased for the division of police will be new Ford Fusion hybrids. These green vehicles will be assigned to our community liaison officers. The remaining 49 vehicles will be SUVs assigned to our patrol officers. These patrol vehicles, along with six vehicles for our fire support staff, will remain, replace existing vehicles that have high mileage and or maintenance costs and have generally exceeded the useful life cycle of their capabilities. If there are no questions, I move for passage. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Also, Council President, I have one announcement. I would like to remind everyone that I will be conducting a second public hearing on hookah established regulations on Wednesday, April 18th at 4.30 p.m. here in City Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Brown. The next committee to come before Council this evening is the Recreation and Parks Committee. Council Member Jiza Page uh, is, will chair that committee. Thank you, President Harding. This evening in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 0511-2018 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into a contract with Class Acts Columbus Incorporated to provide talent buying, fiscal agent, and event management services for events produced by the Office of Special Events to authorize the expenditure of $218,500 from the Recreation and Parks Special Purpose Fund $49,500 from the Recreation and Parks Property Management Fund and $61,500 from the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund for a total of $329,500 to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. Director, could you speak briefly to why the request to waive competitive bidding? Chair Page, members of Council, President Hardin, thank you for uh, considering this legislation. Yeah, just specifically to the waiver, this is a firm that's been working in this capacity as our fiscal representative for a number of years. Uh, they continue to offer good service. And um, we, while we did review this scope in this particular year, we felt as if it was uh, advisable to continue the contract with Class Acts as they've been performing the service for us for a number of years. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Ordinance 0849-2018 to authorize an appropriation in the amount of $15 million from the unappropriated balance of the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund to the Recreation and Parks Department to cover costs for the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging in connection with the Passport Home Care Program to authorize the director to expend up to $15 million from the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund in order to increase various contracts for the provision of passport, home care, and assisted living services administered by the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging and to declare an emergency. Passport provides help at home for seniors as an alternative to nursing home care, and it is also referred to as Ohio's home and community-based Medicaid waiver program for older adults. Emergency action is requested on this ordinance to ensure sufficient funds are available within a 30-day period as required by the grant. And any individuals listening who would like additional information about the Passport Program, please call the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging at 614-645-7250. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance passed. And that's all in the Recreation and Parks this evening. Thank you, Chair Page. The next committee to come before Council is the Neighborhoods Committee. The Neighborhoods Committee is chaired by President Pro Tem Cinziano. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, President Harden. Tonight in the uh, Neighborhoods Committee, bring forward Ordinance 0917-2018 to authorize the Director of the Department of Neighborhoods to enter into a contract renewal with the Neighborhood Design Center for work associated with the Comprehensive Community Master Plan for London 
and to authorize the director to execute those documents necessary on behalf of the city to authorize the expenditure of $75,000 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. As we all know, there's been a lot of work uh, regarding the Linden Community Plan, and as I've seen firsthand, it's truly been a resident-driven planning effort designed to establish a vision uh, for shared prosperity and growth based on the concerns, needs, and aspirations throughout the neighborhood. Uh, the plan continues to develop strategies that address the needs of existing residents and businesses and explores opportunities for additional neighborhood growth. Uh, there is ongoing and will be uh, continual engagement with the community. An upcoming one uh, will be next Tuesday, April 24th at St. Stephen's Community House. Time, we couldn't confirm, uh, but really have been encouraged by the Neighborhood Designs Group ongoing effort and uh, pop-up events, mm -hmm. uh, weekend activities uh, to really garner as much feedback from the community and they've had a great response, not only in person, but also through their app. So if there are no additional questions or comments, I'll move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President, Hardin. Passed. That's all we have in neighborhoods. I'll move on to utilities. In utilities, Please. bring forward ordinance 0882-2018 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter into a construction contract with KW Roofing Incorporated for the Sewer Maintenance Operations Center Roof Replacement Project Phase 2 SCP-03-FW to authorize the transfer within an expenditure of up to $1,421,429 from the Sanitary Sewer General Obligation Bond Fund and to amend the 2017 Capital Improvements Budget. Uh, this ordinance is uh, work consisting of removal to the deck of the existing roofing system, the repair and replacement of any damaged roof deck, and the installation of new lightning protection system to ensure that the building is watertight. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. That's all I have in my committees this evening, President Hardin. Thank you, Chair Stenziano. The next committee to come before council is the Health and Human Services Committee. This committee is chaired by Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, before I begin to read the ordinance, I'm going to ask for Priam to come towards the podium and, and any of her guests that are going to speak to the legislation on, um, I think there are other people that are supposed to come up to the podium with her. <laughs> Prim is the Director of Community and Legislative Strategies, and there are two pieces of legislation on second reading, and there was a piece of legislation um, on consent. And before I read the ordinances, I'm going to let Prim and her guests speak on the legislation. Isn't that correct? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I can speak on the Healthy Beginnings at Home legislation? So thank you, Chair Tyson, Council President Hardin, and members of Council for your support in the Healthy Beginnings at Home program. Celebrate One received over $1 million grant dollars from the housing, Ohio Housing Finance Agency and CareSource Foundation to expand an important pilot program, Care Homes, to help near homeless and homeless women find stable housing during their pregnancy and through the infant's first year of life. Healthy begin our program, Healthy Be Beginnings at Home, will evaluate the impact of stable housing on birth outcomes and infant mortality. Nationwide Children's Hospital and Children's Health Watch will conduct data analysis, lead the evaluation, and prepare a report at the completion of the two-year program. Prematurity is a leading cause of infant mortality in Franklin County. The research suggests that a woman unstably housed increases her risk of prematurity. So some of our program goals are to um, Normal birth weight for all infants born to mothers in the program, decreased vulnerability of mothers and family members, and consistent prenatal and postpartum care. So Celebrate One is working with the following partners to complete the program, Ohio Housing Finance Agency, Affordable Housing Alliance, Barb Poppy and Associates, CareSource, Children's Health Watch, Columbus Metropolitan Housing Authority, Community Shelter Board, Health Management Associates, Homeless Families Foundation, Nishmaw Children's Hospital, and Step One, Physicians Care Connection. And lastly, I did want to introduce a, uh, the newest employee to our team, Christina Ratliff, and she is sitting back there. Um, she will be our programs manager for this Healthy Beginnings at Home program. Thank you. And then my colleagues, Alicia and EC, will speak on the Medicaid ordinances. Good evening. Chair Tyson, Council President Hardin, and members of City Council, thank you for the opportunity to provide brief remarks 
on Ordinances 0859 and Ordinance 0860. On behalf of Erica Clark Jones, the director of Celebrate One, and our many partners, in an effort to reduce infant mortality in nine Ohio counties, which includes Franklin County and the city of Columbus, the Ohio Department of Medicaid, in partnership with Ohio's five managed care plans, has awarded significant grants to support local programs and services. Celebrate One, the community's collective impact effort to reduce infant mortality, coordinated the development and submission of Columbus's grant proposal. Celebrate One and its partners have been awarded over $3.3 million to provide centering pregnancy, which is group prenatal care, home visiting services, community health worker engagement, and two locally grown programs, Step One and Moms to Be. The goals for the program include the expansion of centering pregnancy through Primary One at their east main location on the Near East Side, doubling the capacity of two of our community's home visiting programs, Nurse Family Partnership operated by Nationwide Children's Hospital, and Moms and Babies First, which is operated by Columbus Public Health. This will move us towards our goal of doubling the number of women served in home visiting by 2020. We're leveraging the Crane Family Foundation grant for the sustainability of the Celebrate One Community Connector Corps, which are certified uh, community health workers. We're funding the partial operation of Step One for Healthy Pregnancy that provides early access to prenatal care through a network of 40 uh, providers. And finally, we're continuing to support the eight moms-to-be locations that provide weekly educational nutrition sessions to pregnant and parenting women. Here tonight is one of our critical partners, E.C. Green, who's the Executive Director of Physicians Care Connection, who operates Step One for Healthy Pregnancies. Celebrate One relies heavily on its partners to work closely with expectant and new moms and families to improve our health and neighborhood outcomes. We must work closely with all of our partners to continue to address the community's unacceptable number of infant deaths. We appreciate City Council's attention to these ordinances tonight, and we're happy to answer questions. Any questions by my colleagues? Mm -hmm. No. Just thank you. I want to thank you. Um, certainly, you see, thank you for coming down and certainly all the partners that are working to ensure that our babies are living past their first birthday and having a healthy beginning to have a successful life. So thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. I want to just mention that on the ordinance that um, Priam spoke about, which was 0861-2018, which is um, $990,970 for the um, for dollars for the home housing stabilization program for pregnant women and the dollars are coming from it was a grant to accept the um, these dollars that were provided from the ohio housing finance agency and that legislation is just to accept the dollars and next week's legislation will then be the legislation that will um, provide those dollars to those um, housing agencies so even though she gave a list of them here at council that's not what the legislation is for to so make sure that clarification is there and so um, as you move forward the ordinances that they spoke about ordinance they given us an overview of that so I'm going to go ahead and read ordinance number 0859-2018 is to authorize the office of the mayor and Columbus Board of Health to accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Medicaid for the enhanced maternal health program in the amount of three million three hundred thirty one thousand four hundred eighty three dollars and twenty four cents to authorize the appropriation of three million three hundred thirty one thousand four hundred eighty three dollars and twenty four cents from the other appropriated balance of the general government grants fund 2220 and to declare an emergency if there are no questions or comments i move for passage please call the roll brown page remy stinziano tyson president hardin passed Thank you. Um, and the next ordinance is 0860-2018 to authorize the office of the mayor to enter into various contracts for the enhanced maternal health program to authorize expenditure $1,642,228 from the general government grants fund 2220 to weigh the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code Chapter 329 and to declare 
um, an emergency. The contracts for, um, that have been approved through a grant application are primary one health centers operating centering pregnancy for $169,041. Nationwide Children's Hospital operating the Nurse Family Partnership Home Visiting Program for $636,548. The Physicians Physicians Care Connection Operating Step 1 of $215,039, and the Ohio State University Operating as Moms to Be Program of $621,600. If there are no, and the reason why we're waiving competitive bidding is because it was a grant application process. So if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would um, ask Councilman Remy to read some other legislation and Health and Human Services. Thank you very much, Chair Tyson. Tonight we have ordinance number 0867-2018 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into contract with the Community Shelter Board for the purpose of continuing the city's support of the Safety Net Program for Homeless Emergency Shelters, Related Homeless Shelter Services, and Homelessness Prevention and Transition Services to authorize the expenditure of $2,847,258 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. I move to reconsider by voice vote. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Yeah. Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Stain. President Hardin? Yes. Next, I move to amend by voice vote to 30 days. Please call the roll by voice. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Finally, I move for pa passage. Second. By voice vote. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes. Passed. Next, we have ordinance number. 868 2018 to authorize the transfer of funds from the Department of Development Administration Division to the Housing Division to authorize the Director of Department of Development to enter into an agreement with the Community Shelter Board to support the Rebuilding Lives Program and to declare an emergency. I move to reconsider by voice vote. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes. Reconsider. Move to amend to 30 days by voice vote. Second. Please call the roll. Hmm. I just need to amend 30 day. You can just vote on. Pardon the interruption. 
so once again, I move to amend by to 30 days by voice vote. Please call the roll by voice. Mr. Brown. Yes. <laughs> Page. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Abstain. President Hardin. Yes. Amended. All right. Next, I move to waive second reading. Please call the roll. By voice. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You've got me like, sorry. I'm need to abstain. President Hardin. Yes. Passed. All right, waived. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And fi fi finally, I moved to, to, for passage by voice vote. Please call the roll by voice. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Abstain. President Hardin. Yes. Ordinance 0868 passed. <laughs> Thank you, Council President Hardin. Next, we have ordinance number 869-2018 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into an agreement with the Community Shelter Board for the purpose of implementing the crisis response system to authorize the expenditure of $1,537,704 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. I, I'm double checking what I'm moving for here. Move to reconsider by voice vote. By. Please call the roll by voice. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Yes. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Abstain. President Hardin. Yes. Reconsider. Move to amend to 30 days by voice vote. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Yes. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Abstain. President Hardin. Yes. Amend it. And I move for passage by voice vote. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Yes. Remy. Yes. Stinziano. Yes. Tyson. Abstain. President Hardin. Pass. Uh, yes, pass. Next, we have ordinance number 870-2018 to authorize the director of development, um, excuse me, to authorize the director of Department of Development to enter into contract with the Community Shelter Board for the purpose of continuing the collaborative outreach program, which includes assertive outreach at homeless encampments, proactive engagement, referral to medical and behavioral health care, and linkage to shelter and housing to authorize the expenditure of 117000 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. I move to reconsider by voice vote. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown. Yes. Page. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes, reconsidered. I move to amend to 30 days by voice vote. Yes. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes, amend it. And finally, I move for passage by voice vote. Yes. Please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Hardin? Yes, passed. Thank you very much. I'll throw it back to Chair Tyson. Thank you, Councilman Remy. I have ordinance number 1020-2018 to authorize the appropriation to Columbus Public Health within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund and support the department's child care seat program and to declare an emergency. Uh, I'm now going to ask President Pro Tem Stenziano to give comments on this legislation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this ordinance is consistent with what we've done a couple years in a row now, and that is to provide additional support to the department's car seat program. A little self-explanatory, but it is a program uh, that little concern initially that there was too long of wait lines. We had a need throughout the community. Uh, the department does a great job of kind of pop-up events, doing uh, car seat fittings, uh, but we knew there was still a, a longer wait list than I think we would want. Uh, for the city or the country's opportunity city and so this additional funding helps uh, reduce that wait time significantly and provides additional uh, car seats and booster seats for those that qualify. To get a seat, uh, families will need to participate in a car seat fitting class at the, uh, the Columbus Public Health 
uh, office. The class runs 60 to 90 minutes and teaches the safety features of the car seat, including how to install it in a vehicle correctly. Certified staff members ensure that every family leaves with their car seat installed in the proper format. Uh, this program continues to, as I mentioned, have high levels of interest and demand, increasing the need for products to distribute within the community. Uh, the increased work throughout our new American populations also uh, need additional seats once they learn about the program, and have, this funding will help to make those additional accommodations. Uh, so I really appreciate our colleague and the department's ongoing support of this program. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman um, President Pro Tem Stanziano. Thank you for um, your leadership in ensuring that um, our children, their parents are being educated on how to properly use the child, a child car seat and also to keeping them safe. And so if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. That's all I have for my committee this evening. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Are there any other comments uh, from my colleagues? President Hardin, if I may. Councilmember Page. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to announce the housing and eviction workshop that we have this Wednesday, April 18th at 4.30 at the Good Shepherd Baptist Church, which is located at 1555 East Hudson Street, Columbus, Ohio. And this workshop is open to landlords, tenants, anyone who is interested in learning more about some of our eviction issues and also helping those that they may know who are currently getting evicted. The Legal Aid Society of Columbus will be present as well as Next Gen Columbus, the Franklin County Job and Family Services, as well as individuals from the Franklin County Municipal Court. Thank you, President Hardin. Thank you, Councilmember Page, and thank you for your leadership, um, as well as all those who are working uh, in our city to, uh, to close our gaps as it pertains to housing. Seeing no further business coming for Council and no further comments from my colleagues, may I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Adjourned. We will take non agenda speakers momentarily. Regular meeting number 23 will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there? Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the Zoning Committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I will briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Okay, the first ordinance is 0952 2018. It is to, uh, to rezone 1291 Briggs Center Drive, being 0.46 acres located on the west side of Briggs Center Drive, 450 feet north of Briggs Road, from R2F Residential District to LC3 Limited Commercial District. The applicant is 3C Body Shop. The proposed use is parking and office uses. The C Department's recommendation is approval, and the Southwest Air Commission's recommendation is approval. And that was unanimous. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0986-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3363.01, M manufacturing districts, 3312.27, parking setback line, and 3363.24, building lines in the M manufacturing district of the Columbus City Codes. For the property located at 324 East 2nd Avenue to permit a multi-unit residential development with reduced setbacks in the M Manufacturing District. District, I'm sorry. The applicant is Avenue Partners, LLC. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. 
The C Department's recommendation is approval, and the Italian Village Commission's recommendation is approval. That was four to one. First, I move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Amended. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0988-2018 to rezone 826 East Dublin Granville Road, being 1.2 acres located on the north side of East Dublin Granville Road, 160 feet east of Huntley Road, from the LM Limited Manufacturing District to the LM Limited Manufacturing to the LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is Ohio Mulch. The proposed use is a landscaping and mulch retail and wholesale. The C Department's recommendation is approval. The Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval of 9, 4, and 3. First, I move for passage by voice vote. Second. Please call the roll by voice. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes. Ordinance passed. Thank you. And the final ordinance I have in zoning today is 0991-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.039 R4 residential district, 3312.49C minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3332.05 area district lot width requirements, 3332.15 R4 area district requirements, 3332.19 fronting on a public street, 3332.25B maximum side yards required, 3332.26C1 minimum side yard permitted, and 3332.27 rear yard of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 867 Neal Avenue to permit a single unit dwelling, a carriage house on the rear of a lot developed with a single unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Carson Thrush. The proposed use is a carriage house on a lot developed with a single unit dwelling. The C department's recommendation is approval. Victoria Village, Re Victoria Village Commission's recommendation is approval four to zero. First, I move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Amended. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you, that's all I have in zoning this evening. Thank you, Chairwoman Tyson. Um, that is all that we have in zoning, so can I get a motion to adjourn? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Have a good evening.